I became better because I compared myself with others. I saw how others were doing their performance. I saw how skillful other people were. And that's why I looked up to them in the beginning and tried to ask myself, okay, they can do it. How can I try and get to that point as well? Team motivation with greatness begins. Today's video is sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com. My name is Shi Hang Yi. I am currently the headmaster here from the Shaolin Temple Europe. And in this function, I'm taking care of sharing all the knowledge that I have at the moment with everybody who's interested to know more about the different Shaolin practices and Shaolin arts. And that means the purpose of our organization that we have here in Germany is really to be a point where everyone who is interested can come and just experience for themselves what all of these Shaolin uh, teachings are about. I think it's really important when you grow up that you have also some type of idols or some people that you are looking up to. And so that means when I grew up, the first type of movies that I was, let's say, uh, introduced to or loved to watch were mainly martial art movies. And that also meant that for me, growing up here in Germany, I saw all different types of the 36 chambers of Shaolin and all different movies about the famous Shaolin temple. And therefore, it already caught my interest very, very early. So martial arts was something interesting for me. And this simply fit together with the way of how my father was uh, thinking that time, that he wanted me to start practicing with the age of four, to just join a Shaolin school nearby here in Kaiserslautern, Germany, where I just start my practice. There came some hard times where I really wanted to give up and didn't follow up anymore on the martial arts side. But my father, in that sense, he never gave me a choice to even consider of quitting something that uh, I started so early in age. I went to school here in Germany. After school, I went to the training. After training, I was sleeping and eating the normal things. But then it was really, really simple, my life, in terms of I had the school, I had the training, and I had the other things needed to just live. But that was it. So all of my energy, all of my focus, I could completely invest in the training and also in the, in the school system, yeah. First of all, it's about feel good. Wake up without having any part of your body which is like disturbing you to live a normal day. It starts really with the simple, simple things. We need to do things, we need to be active. We cannot sit in the hotel room and just watch television. So to discover, to explore, to make something from your journey means you need to walk. We need to be active. But now the question is, when you look at your 24-hour day, how much of this 24-hour day is it active? And how much of it is it like waiting, sitting and passively observing? So we need both of them. But when it comes to exploring, we need activity. This gives us structure. This gives us structure and tells our body, look, in the morning you wake up, energy raise up. Be active. Prepare yourself to do activity. Start walking, start meeting people, start doing the things that cost you energy. It's necessary to create. It is also important right now to have 
something in your life where you really feel this is something that regenerates me. This gives me regeneration. Regeneration means that your energy creation, that the, that the amount of energy that you are replenishing, that this is higher than your energy output. Then this is called regeneration. Watch your diet. What are you eating? What are you drinking? How much are you sleeping? How much how vital do you feel? And the more vital you feel, the higher those areas can become where you are actively creating something. And to create something, I think, all humans somehow would like to do. To create a life everyone personally really enjoys to live but in order to do this you cannot do it without proper methods you cannot do it without proper preparation and you also cannot do it without the proper character traits that can support you very very much when it comes to such an uh, such an approach without having some guiding principles in his lifetime and one of them certainly is structure so that means any successful person nowadays i don't think he reach that point by just doing what he wants during the day. Maybe right now he's in the position that he can do what he wants, but how he got there is not by doing what he wanted. He put himself a structure, he put himself a guideline, and no matter how he felt during that day, this was the code this was the mission and this is what he kept. If you feel tired or not, yeah? if you are in the mood to do it or not, you had your structure and you kept it. Even so that we are in the 21st century and the possibilities of doing and exploring this world are so huge it doesn't mean that you should freely do what you want at all times. This is not the way of how in the monastery, in the Shaolin temple, we are regarding it as a healthy way of growing. Inside this daily structure, number one, there is no place for your own wishes, what you would like to do. We don't think the human is going to develop in a proper direction when he is just following what he thinks he wants to do. This is not the type of freedom that is helpful for yourself and it's also not helpful for the people that are afterwards dealing with you. Because this type of freedom, you think it's the freedom of the mind. You think that everything the mind tells you, I need to follow. That means freedom. No, for us it's the other way around. To learn and not follow what the mind tells you. This is the first step towards freedom. Take a step back. Retreat from yourself. Go back into observation mode. Stay calm. And just observe. So this time, 
we really want to be passive and be in the observation mode. Because this observation mode now really gives you the insight of where are you standing at this point of time in this life. From my side and why I keep the Shaolin teachings and why I keep sharing all of these knowledge and treasures out to the world right now is because I think that type of spirit to not give up when the times are getting hard. It's not just the Shaolin who are, who are living this type of spirit, but they also possess it. Because this is what makes the difference between someone that we call a warrior and maybe another person, somebody that we call who succeeds and somebody you maybe call today a loser. The difference is both are going to come to the point where they are facing the challenge and when they are maybe facing also their defeat for the first time. The only difference is that the warrior keeps going. It's all about compassion, it's about love, it's about uniting, it's about understanding others, it's about acceptance, not living too much in extremes, which certainly is very true. These are really, really valuable teachings when the time has come to understand them. But nevertheless, today we are famous and today we are very proud of the Shaolin warrior monks. They are expressing something. They are expressing something which, when you can feel it, you feel it's something very special to have nowadays. It's endless in a way. It becomes endless, this path of how much you can grow. Team motivation with greatness begins.